In its war in Ukraine, Russian helicopter crews have suffered extensive losses. Based on documented crash sites, at least 50 have been shot down so far. The Ukrainian military claims that number is more like 180. And while the exact number of losses is unknown, even 50 is catastrophic. Facing such high risk, Russian pilots were forced to change their tactics to what is being called spray and pray. It's also being called cowardly, amateurish, and inaccurate. While precision attacks by helicopters usually are accurate to within a few meters, spray and pray attacks are often hundreds of meters off target. The Russians, however, don't seem to care. They seem perfectly happy to cause destruction wherever they go, whether they hit a tank, a bunker, farmhouse, or an empty wheat field. Normally, combat helicopters fly a very different mission profile, exactly the opposite of spray and pray. Precision attacks are accomplished with guided missiles, guns and strafing passes, or carefully aimed salvos of unguided rockets that are fired directly at key targets. The pilot hovers or orbits just over the battlefield, identifies the target, designates it with a laser, and then launches a high-tech guided missile to make the kill. The problem is, a hovering or low-flying helicopter is a sitting duck against modern, shoulder-launched, surface-to-air missiles. In that light, it isn't hard to see why they're flying spray-and-pray missions. Frankly, it's the only survivable alternative. Let's review what a spray-and-pray attack looks like. Typically, both a target and a time slot are assigned to the flight crew before they take off. Once airborne, they fly in loose formations and at low to medium altitude. Once they arrive in the battle area, they descend to treetop level and work in pairs. First, they carefully consider surrounding terrain and they identify their assigned targets. Based on the hills and tree lines, they work out a plan for how to best engage while minimizing their risk. The key is to select a good pop-up launch point. This has to be exactly 5 kilometers from the assigned target. That's a distance required based on simple physics and the ballistics of the types of rockets they're firing. Those rockets can't normally hit targets that far away, however, but one of the advantages of spray and pray is that the missiles are fired on an upward arc, which increases their range. Once the plan is decided, the pilots begin their attack. They fly low, down between the trees and behind the hills as much as possible. They're careful to remain out of sight of any Ukrainian positions so they can achieve tactical surprise. As they make their run in, they accelerate rapidly to a speed of about 180 km per hour. When they reach the selected pop-up point, the pilot pulls back sharply on the control stick and pitches the helicopter's nose up. When the helicopter reaches a 30-degree climb angle, the pilot neutralizes the controls. This stabilizes the helicopter and eliminates any G-loads that would have otherwise affected the flight path of the rockets. Then they fire. The rockets fly upward at first, and about 20 seconds later, they will rain down onto the target in the distance. From the start of the pop-up to when they fire takes only about 3 seconds. As soon as the rockets are cleanly away from the helicopter, the Russian pilot dumps the collective, pushes the nose back down, and sharply rolls into a tight descending turn. The goal is to get back behind a hill or behind a tree line to escape any Ukrainian surface-to-air missiles that might have been launched. This is when the helicopter is most at risk. It takes about 8 seconds to get low enough to avoid getting shot down. Most of the time, the breakaway maneuver works, but a small mistake in timing can spell disaster. From the Ukrainian side, the troops usually spot the attacking helicopter the moment it fires its rockets. The smoke trails that those rockets emit point directly back at the helicopter. If they're expecting an attack, they can turn quickly and return fire with a missile. And when that happens, Russian pilots can be heard frantically calling out warnings over the radio. Ukraine's missiles are among the best available in the world today. The fastest is the British Star Streak HVM system. It can hit a target out to 7 kilometers away, and the most important thing is the missile's speed. Within a couple of seconds after launch, the missile accelerates to Mach 4. 
That's 4,900 kilometers per hour. In other words, it flies 1.35 kilometers per second. This means that a star streak can close that 5 kilometer distance in as little as 4 or 5 seconds. Since it generally takes about 8 seconds for a Russian pilot to complete the breakaway and get down to safety, the Ukrainians have the advantage. The only thing that saves the Russians from sure death is that it might take a few seconds to lift up, aim, lock on, and fire the star streak. Even so, it's a close thing. However, most of Ukraine's surface-to-air missiles are older Russian designs, like the Igla. The maximum range of that is almost exactly 5 kilometers, and it flies at only around Mach 2. That means the missile can still reach the Russian helicopter in only 8 or 9 seconds. In other words, if it takes 8 seconds for the Russian pilot to execute the breakaway, there's only a few seconds one way or another that spell the difference between life and death. If the Russian pilot evades and gets away, they return to their base and rearm. Then they take back off and do it all over again. While we don't know how many attacks a single helicopter and crew can perform in each day, it seems likely to be at least a half dozen. At the end of the day, the helicopter is left with the ground crews for overnight maintenance. That way, it'll be ready for the next morning. Day after day, it goes on like this now. And there's no end in sight. While some say that spray and pray is cowardly and unprofessional, on balance, it seems like a valid response to the level of threat the Russians are facing. Further, the advantages of a spray and pray seem pretty significant. First, even if less accurate overall, a single flight crew can deliver more rockets into an assigned target area every day, day after day. Second, the types of rockets used are inexpensive and easily manufactured. They don't include any high-tech components. Russia can produce those in an endless supply, even while they're running short of more sophisticated missile types. Third, Russian flight crews are becoming quite expert at aiming spray and prey attacks anyway. They're hitting more or less within a few hundred meters of where they're aiming. Fourth, while they don't expect to hit an individual tank or bunker, they're still able to rain their rockets down over a wide target area with impunity. Like artillery fire, this has a real impact. Fifth, the way Russia sees it, time is on its side. Spray and pray seems perfect for the kind of war they're fighting. The job is to outlast Ukrainian defenders in a long and bloody war. Finally, as for the claim that spray and pray is cowardly, it seems to me that Russian pilots are still facing extreme risk every time they fly. It takes courage to attack again and again, day after day, week after week, knowing that it's just a matter of time before they're going to be shot down. In other words, despite the naysayers, spray and pray works. Above all, it seems like a very Russian solution to the problem, though I think we should come up with a different name for it. I say that for a reason. Based on the number of atrocities the Russians have committed so far, maybe it's just me, or they don't seem to be much of the praying type. I'm Thomas Van Hare, and this is Historic Wings. Please subscribe, click like, and consider sponsoring us. And remember, there's always more to the story. <laughs>